must embrace the spirit of Harvey Milk and fight back even harder to ensure we realize full LGBTQ plus equality in our country. Hello everybody, Nicholas Snow here, and I often say welcome to a very special episode of Promo Homo TV, and this is a very special episode. We are at the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast Coachella Valley. Actually, it's more properly known as the Harvey Milk Coachella Valley Diversity Breakfast. It's Thursday, May 11th, 2023. And this, and you're going to see why, is one of my favorite events of the entire year. It's moving, it's poignant, it's powerful, it's inspiring, and sometimes heartbreaking. Because as we look ahead to where we want to go, we look back at from whence we came. And of course, we're commemorating the wonderful life and the tragic death of Harvey Milk. Uh, so many people in this day and age are unaware of who Harvey Milk was and what he means to the LGBTQ civil rights movement. He was involved when it was just referred to as the gay rights movement. And uh, so much has happened since then, so much will continue to happen. But uh, as is the case, I'm honored to bring it to you now, exclusively, on Promo Homo TV. Promo Homo TV is all about empowering you, our communities, and our world. For their support of Promo Homo TV, I wish to thank my sponsors. Willie's Modern Fair, 1501 Uptown Gastropub, and 849 Restaurant and Lounge. Three restaurants, unlimited flavors. Shouting out to my media partners, Pink Media. Amplifying Promo Homo TV across the Twitterverse with their hashtag I Love Gay campaign. GayDesertGuide.LGBT And KGay1065 Palm Springs, available worldwide. Ask your smart speaker to play KGAY. It's as simple as this. We will save our democracy in 2024, or we will watch the United States implode. I'm Nicholas Snow, and this crisis we face is why I have launched The Snowstorm, a nightly Hot Topics panel discussion show in which I will curate your social media comments into the show, and we will connect the conversation to action we can take to save America. Watch The Snowstorm, nightly at 6 p.m. Pacific at promohomo.tv. Harvey knew that visibility mattered. But on November 27, 1978, a disgruntled former supervisor assassinated Harvey Milk and Mayor George Moscone in the San Francisco City Hall. That night, a crowd of thousands spontaneously came together on Castro Street and marched to City Hall in a silent candlelight vigil that has been recognized as one of the most eloquent responses to violence that a community has ever expressed. Harvey received daily death threats. He was aware of the likelihood that he might be assassinated. In fact, he recorded several versions of his will, which was entitled, To Be Read in the Event of My Assassination. How sad. One of his tapes contained the now famous statement, 
If a bullet should enter my brain, let that bullet destroy every closet door. Yes, indeed. Harvey's legacy lives on today through the countless number of LGBTQ plus elected officials who have held office since his assassination, as well as the concept of LGBTQ visibility. It is something that we all owe Harvey a great debt of gratitude and has enabled us to advocate our right for equality. But his work and our work continue, and that's why we are all here today. As Harvey famously said many times, my name is Harvey Mel, and I'm here to recruit you. Please welcome committee members Ellen Irvine and Carrie Hendricks. Welcome to the 11th Annual Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast, supporting safe schools of the desert. This morning we are 1,100 people strong here to celebrate a life and honor the legacy of one of our true national LGBTQ heroes, Harvey Milk. We do this because more than any other modern figure, Harvey Milk's life and political career embody the rise of the LGBTQ civil rights movement here in the great state of California, across the nation, and throughout the world. We are so proud and thankful to each of you for being here this morning and making this the largest gathering we've ever seen. Incidentally, if Harvey was alive today, he would, have, he would be turning 93 on May 22nd. Just as Harvey displayed an affinity for building coalitions, for the better good of the community, we got here today through a collaborative effort of the Harvey Milk Diversity Coalition. Could I ask all committee members to please stand and be recognized? Thank you all for your time and commitment in this showcase of diversity. An event like this costs money to produce, and we're incredibly thankful for all of the sponsors who stepped up to help this morning's event make this event possible. Please take time to look over our sponsor list in the program and on the screen and thank them for your patronage. Let's give them a huge round of applause, please. And a huge thank you to Rob Hampton, the Palm Springs Convention Center, the Sound and AV crew from Encore, all of the employees who are serving us breakfast this morning, and today's volunteers from Gay for Good and Palm Springs Pride. With us today is our next generation of LGBTQ leaders, our students. We're especially proud that 300 high school students and their advisors are in the audience. Thanks to our partners at Safe Schools, Desert Cities for organizing and coordinating the students' participation. As Harvey famously said, you gotta give them hope. And we believe that student participation at this event, at this event, empowers our LGBTQ plus youth and inspires them to lead. Special thanks to all the team sponsors who have made it possible for students from the high desert and throughout the Coachella Valley to be with us. One last note, please, uh, many of our students under or under the age of 18, we ask that you please refrain from taking photos of the students. We are part of a movement whose diverse communities include an ever-increasing legion of magnificent allies, along with an emerging youth movement of LGBTQ+, genderqueer, two-spirit, questioning, and intersex leaders. We intersect all cultures and faiths, and we have learned from Harvey Milk we are stronger together, and to drive equality forward, we need to ensure elected leaders represent our collective voices in the halls of justice and power. And speaking of elected leaders, we have many from the area who are joining us this morning, in part because Harvey Milk opened that door. Please hold your applause until the end, or we'll be here all day. <laughs> With us this morning, we have Palm Springs City Council, Mayor Grace Garner, Mayor Pro Temp Jeffrey Bernstein, 
Council Members Lisa Middleton, Christy Holstich, and Ron DeHart. Palm Springs City Manager Scott Stiles, Palm Springs Fire Chief Paul Alvarado, Palm Springs Police Chief Andy Miles, Mills, sorry. And from uh, Cathedral City, we have Mayor Rita Lamb, Mayor Pro Temp Mark Cavalli, Council Members Raymond Gregory and Nancy Ross, and George Crum, the Palm Earths, Cathedral City Police Chief. From Palm Desert, we have Mayor Pro Temp Katrina Quintanera. From the city of Coachella, we have Mayor Steve Hernandez, Mayor Pro Temp Nefertali Barlanza, Palm Spur, Council Members Frank Figueroa, Dr. Frank Figueroa, Stephanie Virgin, Dennis Delgado. From the Palm Springs Unified School District, Dr. Mike Sweezy. From Desert Sands Unified School District, Public Information Officer Mary Perry and Student Facilitator Lori St. James. Dr. Joel Kitterman, College of the Desert Trustee, Area 4. Former California State Assembly Member Rich Gordon. Former Cathedral City Council Member Shelley Kaplan. Former Palm Springs Mayor Ron Oden and former Palm Springs City Council member, Jenny Fote. Now, let's all give them a round of applause and thank them all for being here. The Hard to Milk Diversity Breakfast in Palm Springs began as a vision of City Council member, Rhonda Hart, and founded, who founded the inaugural breakfast with co-chair George Zander. Over the past 12 years, with Ron's leadership, this event has grown tremendously and every year helps move more and more of our valley's LGBTQ youth. Please welcome our event chairperson, Council Member Rhonda Hart. Thank you, Ellen and Carrie. I appreciate that. And thank you all for being with us today. The Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast is a program of Palm Springs Pride. It's organized by a coalition of community and business leaders who come together to celebrate community and the legacy of Harvey Milk. One of the greatest things that the breakfast does is it lifts hundreds of students from throughout Coachella Valley, and it's a platform for us to share the history of Harvey Milk and honor his legacy. This is an inspirational event for youth and adults alike. The attention and applause, along with the investment that you give to the youth, is empowering and liberating. Since this breakfast started in 2012, we've earmarked well over $100,000 for Valley LGBTQ youth-related programs and Gay Straight Alliance clubs to fund their activities. These dollars go directly to youth programs and students who organize within their schools and their communities. We provide rainbow sashes to any graduating senior who wants to wear one. We underwrite field trips to make it possible for a GSA who wants to march in the Pride Parade. This is all possible, made possible, because of your support and participation here today. As the pioneering, openly gay elected official in California, Harvey Milk fought for the rights of equality for all, including elderly, small business owners, and the many ethnic communities of his district, as well as the growing gay community. Unfortunately, recent, our community has been under attack recently by the radical right. So now, more than ever, we must try to chip away and reverse some of the forward movement. We must not let them reverse the forward movement that we've gained. We must embrace the spirit of Harvey Milk and fight back even harder to ensure we realize full LGBTQ plus equality in our country. Now, we take a moment to recognize a local shero who we recently lost. Gail Christian broke barriers as a black on-air correspondent 
and rose to national prominence at NBC News and PBS. She died April 12th at the age of 83. Her pioneering role as a black news reporter allowed black kids to see, many for the first time, someone admirable on TV who looked like them. It gave them recognition and it gave them hope. In 1981, she moved to Washington, where she started nearly a decade-long run as the news director for PBS. After a long, historic career, she eventually settled in Palm Springs with her wife, Lucy, who she married in 2016. Lucy's with us today. In 2003, the couple started an event called Dinah in Color, which provided identifiable space, identifiable space for women of color to come together during the Dinah weekend in Palm Springs. Gail was a leader in the jazz and blues community, the LGBTQ plus women's and women of color communities. Her focus helped shape an LGBTQ community where social justice and issues of equality are discussed with equal importance as issues of gender and sexuality. At this event in 2019, we were thrilled to honor Gail and Lucy for their dedication to our community with the Harvey B. Milk Leadership Award. Today, we mourn the loss of one of our most iconic figures and send our love and condolences to Lucy. Please welcome Harvey Milk Outstanding Youth of the Year Award recipient, Sedona Cruz. Sedona doesn't know this, but we're surprising her with recognition today as being the outstanding youth for 2023, uh, presenting her this plaque with the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast Coachella Valley, outstanding youth, Sedona Cruz. Congratulations. <laughs> so much to IECF and Safe Schools for having me here up on this stage today. Good morning. morning. My name is Sedona Cruz and I'm in my third year as a BFA in film video at the California Institute of the Arts. I've been a Safe Schools Desert City Scholarship recipient for the last three years. Like many people, the last three years have been a little bit blurry. We've had season 14 of Drag Race, we've had many TikTok trends, but what is clear to me is that I have been given the privilege to pursue my career in education one of the greatest art schools in the country. I am incredibly grateful to be in front of all of you today and that this time next year I will have completed my degree because of the generosity of this organization. I was asked to talk about some parallels in my life in comparison to Harvey Milk, and although I am no groundbreaking politician, I do find a need to disrupt and innovate Although my generation has faced some major struggles, including having to sanitize our groceries and buy mass amounts of toilet paper, <laughs> I believe we have the mission and are continuing to honor Harvey Milk's legacy. Like Milk did for the future of youth like myself, I find it my generation's duty in writing the history for the youth of tomorrow by using key virtues of perseverance and innovation to make our voices heard. If anything, because of our separation and distance, I believe that my generation proves that Despite our divisions in many ways more than one, we will continue to come together to do what's right. And that's why we're all here today. Harry Milk once recalled the time in his campaign saying, I wish I had time to explain everything I did. Almost everything was done with an eye on the LGBT movement. Last week, I got a phone call from Pennsylvania and the voice was young. And I allegedly gave one more young person hope. To end my speech today, I challenge all of you to speak to at least one person in your life and have a listen to their story and hear what they have to say. Thank you so much.
to present the Harvey Milk Leadership Award, please welcome Palm Springs City Council member, Lisa Middleton. Good morning, Palm Springs. I am so thrilled to be here this morning to present this award to my friend, California's 8th Insurance Commissioner, Ricardo Lara. Ricardo was raised in East Los Angeles by immigrant parents and earned a BA in Journalism and Spanish with a minor in Chicano Studies from San Diego State University. Commissioner Lara previously served California's State Legislature representing Assembly District 50 and Senate District 33. In 2018, he made history by becoming the first openly gay person to be elected statewide in the state of California. A champion of education. <laughs> Ricardo is a champion of educational equity, civil rights, and immigrant rights. Ricardo authored legislation that improved the quality of life for California's working families by improving access to education, protecting a woman's right to take pregnancy leave, ensuring greater government transparency and oversight, protecting taxpayer dollars, and ensuring certain consumer protections. As our insurance commissioner, he is a leader in the growing problem of climate change, helping to protect the most vulnerable communities and citizens from the effects of weather-related disasters. He has also co-authored AB 1645 and SB 27, bills that would expand access to preventative health care, especially PrEP, PEP, and STI testing and treatment, at no cost to the millions of Californians. He's a strong and vocal defender of reproductive freedom and fights for the continued access to abortion rights because he believes that reproductive health care is health care and vows that Californians will never take the steps that are being taken backwards in other states. Commissioner Lara is an out and proud public servant who, like Harvey Milk, knows that visibility matters. Whether in California's legislature or as insurance commissioner, he has spent his entire working career making a difference in actively improving the quality of life for all Californians. Please join me in congratulating as this year's Harvey Milk Leadership Award, our good friend, Ricardo Lara. Buenos dias. Bárbaro. It's beautiful to be here. Oh my God, I'm just seeing a lot of folks here. It's amazing. Uh, good morning. It's great to be here today. And, um, you know, I'm always a, a bit overwhelmed when I'm with my people. Uh, so many times we're in rooms where we're the only one or where people say you cannot do what you want to do. Uh, and it's a continuous struggle and fight. And before I go on, I want to say what an honor it is to be recognized with the true icon in our community, Nicole Marie Ramirez. Let's give her a round of applause for the tremendous work she has done. And San Diego is my second home, and so it's such a, she's such an incredible individual in our community. And so, you know, I come to you as the first, but I'm certainly not going to be the last. And that responsibility falls on every single one of us in this room. And I also want to take a moment to acknowledge 
the fact that I would not be standing here. So many of us would not be in public office if it wasn't for every single one of you today. We are the product of the work and the organizing and the struggles that you live through in your own experience. That doesn't, that is, I say that to remind us of our own individual superpowers as LGBTQ leaders and champions in our own right. The fact that I'm able to oversee the largest insurance market in the country, fourth in the world, to be able to have a seat at those tables, I stand on every single one of your shoulders. Because through those struggles, through those individual experiences, through those fears that we all overcame, you opened the door for people like me. For young, a young LGBTQ queer guy, goth dude from East Los Angeles, <laughs> who still loves Susie on the Banshees and she's my hero. Um, there's something about her music. When I felt and discovered Susie Sue, I thought it was unstoppable. And it was in my room with you know, my sheets and doing my stuff and I, you know, it's like, that was like, I can do anything. <laughs> but I honestly, I receive this humbly and I know there's so many students here from various GSAs and I'll tell you that you inspire all of us. Your strength, your courage to be yourself, the courage to fight for our place at the table is always encouraging to see young people just take it to the next step. And so here as public servants, we stand before you to be held accountable, to, be, uh, in, to demonstrate to you that we're also not only fighting a good fight, but we have that responsibility to pay it forward. You know, Harvey Milk led the way so that someone like me could come along and destroy that pink ceiling at the statewide level. We need to continue to push to make sure that we get an LGBTQ governor that understands who we are and that really recognizes the fact that it is our turn to have that seat at the table. And so we're gonna work and we're gonna push to ensure that we continue to break these grounds, but that we do it on recognizing that every single one of you contributed to that victory. And so I just say, muchas gracias de todo corazón. Porque no es fácil salir a un mundo en el cual no eres respetado y no te quieren. Pero con el apoyo de todos ustedes, nuestros inmigrantes, nuestra comunidad latina, LGBT, Estamos aquí igual en California, en un estado que nos respetan y que entienden que nosotros como inmigrantes también contribuimos a esta comunidad. Y que la comunidad LGBT somos todos. Somos refugiados, somos inmigrantes. The beauty about our LGBTQ community is that we're in every community. We're refugees, we're immigrants. You know, we're asylum seekers. Those Families that you see crossing the border, those are the future assembly members, senators, governors, congress members, because that was my mom, that was my dad, to fight to give us a better life. And that is who we are as our LGBTQ community. We don't give up, we get up and fight, and we do it in such a fabulous way, <laughs> right? And we do it in such an unapologetic way. And you tell us no, and we're going to come back time and time and time again. And so this award, I, I, you know, I accept it, and I, I humbly accept it, but know that it comes from all of you, and I'm just blessed to stand on all of your shoulders. And you are the ones that give us the power and strength to open that C-suite, demand our rights, demand that we are seen and that we are apologetic about who we are and what we represent. So thank you to all of you for paving the way for all of the rest of us.
to be able to do this important and critical work as we make sure we keep insurance companies accountable so that they do no, no longer discriminate uh, on, uh, for life insurance for folks that are HIV positive or living with HIV. So ensuring that our, our gay couples and LGBTQ couples have access to life insurance. You know, so many of us are new at this because we've lost so many throughout the generations. But now we have the privilege to get older, to start building a nest egg, to start building that financial security for the next generation. And we want to make sure that you have exactly all the rights and protections that every single other person has in this state. And so we're going to continue to fight. Muchas gracias. Thank you for this. It's truly an honor. I love you all. Thank you. Please welcome committee member Raul Rodriguez. Buenos dias, good morning. Several cities in the Coachella Valley have joined us in honoring the memory of Harvey Milk and celebrating his life story, message, and legacy with the Harvey Milk Day proclamation. Official proclamations have been issued by the following. City of Palm Springs, Cathedral City, City of Desert Hot Springs, City of La Quinta, and City of Coachella. Thank you to all who are standing with us and honoring Harvey Milk. As members of the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast Committee, we believe it is vital to share stories from our youth. Uh, these stories create an opportunity to hear their voice and help build greater awareness of the LGBTQ plus experience in schools. It also helps us all understand the importance of creating safe and affirming youth programs and spaces. In addition, it allows the youth to engage in activities that promote acceptance and equality for all. Earlier, we heard from the very impressive Sedona Cruz as she spoke so eloquently from this podium. Our next speaker has taken a different approach. He is Elwin Anton, a second year College of the Desert student studying to be a primary technician. He says his four years as an active member of his high school GSA inspired him to be an LGBTQ plus activist. He is currently involved in the Gender and Sexual Diversity Pride Center at College of the Desert and a member of the student-led club known as the Sexuality and Gender Alliance. Both of these organizations share his passion and commitment to an inclusive, and safe environment for all LGBTQ students, whether on campus and in the community as well. And once he has his pharmacy degree, he hopes to one day work for one of the many LGBTQ plus healthcare facilities in the greater Palm Springs area. He is also a talented writer and poet, and today we are thrilled to present his newest poem entitled, Tomorrow I Will Be Different. two words, I'm gay. For myself I've accepted day by day. To be or not to be, that is the question. Openly gay or stay with tradition and religion. Coming out to my family, man, that's scary. All that pressure that I had to carry. I don't see myself as one color, I'm the whole box. Remember playing dolls with the girls in the sandbox. He hid himself in order to fit in, knowing that being gay was his sin. When I was innocent and little, I call you my mama. But now that I've changed, I give you so much trauma. Mama, you knew I was different and won't fall in line. For my sexuality is, not, is one thing you can't decline. Every second, every minute, every hour, I ask, what is the matter? You look at me like I'm the mad hatter. I am now grown, but I'm still learning. However, your acceptance, I'm still yearning. I'm sorry, Father, I am the family line. Please stop saying it is just 
fun. You forced me into sports and taught me how to be a man, yet that didn't fit my own plan. Mom, Dad, I didn't mean to tear your hearts apart, but I want to make things all right, but I don't know where to start. Depression, pain, and heartache was there all along, making sense of where do I belong. I didn't plan in life to fall short. However, I found people that gave me support. At first, my sisters, now my best friends, you knew I was gay. The two of you put me in makeup and told me I slay. Both of you taught me how to be offended. You know you love me for being dramatic. You both helped mom and dad see the light as the need for acceptance was now our fight. As years passed, my family grew and understand our love for one another will continue to expand. Mom, Dad, thank you for coming to my shows, seeing your son dancing on his tippy toes. In life, I know that there are moments that are a drag. However, I am and I will own the word fag. As I grow older, I'm a diamond that will continue to shine bright. I am a proud Filipino gay man, and I know I'm all right. Please welcome our way to enter. System, especially Gloria Camp. Uh, and speaking of support system, I am here today supported by my Pride Student Leadership Team from College of the Desert. <laughs> Being in this day means a lot to me because this poetry video of mine is a love letter to my younger self, and to all future and current LGBTQIA plus students today. I want them to know, to connect and understand that there will always be comfort and happiness after coming out. Um, and that there will always be people to love and support you, no matter what. And that they will care and love you. So, to current and future LGBTQ students, and to that young Filipino boy who loved to sing, dance, act, and be his authentic self, I love you, and I hope you love yourself too. Thank you.
lose control. We like to burn out fast. We're hot like that. Desert Cities at DJ Eric Gordales. Can you imagine having a secret and feeling you had to hold on to it so tightly that you would rather die than have it be known? This was the case with Aaron who was a happy and outgoing student until he reached adolescence and discovered he was gay. Fearing rejection from his family and friends, Aaron decided to keep this part of himself a secret. But Aaron found that life in the closet was a very dark place. It left him feeling shameful, hopeless, and completely alone. Without any support system, anyone to tell him any differently, Aaron decided and concluded that this was not a life worth living, and so he killed himself. Stories like Aaron's are heartbreaking, and more common than you might think. But, the good news, actually, let me give you some statistics. So, a recent survey found that in 2022, a 45%, a survey found that 45% of LGBTQ plus youth seriously considered taking their own lives. 18% actually made an attempt, which is at twice the rate of all US teens. Now these statistics are disturbing, but the good news is that having a support system can make all the difference in these young people's lives. At Safe Schools Desert Cities, we work directly with GSA clubs, student-run GSA clubs in middle and high schools across the Coachella Valley and beyond. We provide them with resources, education, and opportunities for self-expression. Today, I'm asking you to support, help support our programs, our activities, and our events, including the Rainbow Youth Summit, tomorrow night's Pride Prom, the Summer Leadership and Empowerment Camp, the Youth Zone, and Pride Walk at Palm Springs Pride and of course, our scholarship and awards programs. So today I'm asking you to donate generously and uh, help support our programs so that Safe Schools Desert Cities can continue to engage our LGBTQ plus youth with the knowledge that they are absolutely worthy of education, opportunity, life, and love. To learn more about our work at Safe Schools Desert Cities, I encourage you to visit us online at safeschoolsdc.org. That is safeschoolsdc.org. We, all, we all have the power to change and sometimes save lives. To that end, I hope you'll join us. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite committee member Deanne Hopings uh, to join me up here on stage, please.
Good morning, all. The Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast directly supports Saint, uh, Desert, sorry, Saint Schools Desert Cities, and we are proud that 23 Burton May Pride Awards were presented to students who demonstrate leadership and the power to rise above oppressive social and economic circumstances. These scholarships awards are sponsored by their namesakes, John Burton and Ken May, and various partners such as the Walt Whitman Foundation of the Inland Empire Community Foundation, Desert Business Association, Coachella Valley Coffee Company, and Brothers of the Desert. The 2023 Burton May Pride Award recipients include the full spectrum of the LGBTQ plus community. They are from the Coachella Valley area high schools. They enroll in UC campuses, CSU campuses, College of the Desert, and the California Institute of the Arts. They have served as officers in their high school GSAs, they have had to fight for the right to use bathrooms according to their gender identity. They make films, they dance, and they write poetry. They have walked in pride parades. They have staffed the youth zone during Palm Springs Pride Weekend. One thing that they have in common is that they want to make the world a better place. And they are beautiful and they are very proud. Please welcome a few of the 2023 Burton May Pride Award recipients. Let's have another round of applause for our students. Thank you all for coming out this morning. It means a lot to me personally. Thank you. Governor Maura Healy. I've said before that seeing is believing. When young people see themselves in their elected officials, they see that their own potential is limitless. Representation matters. And I follow in the footsteps of people like Harvey Milk and generations of change makers and barrier breakers who paved the way for people like me. I see that as an important piece of my role now to open up doors for other women, LGBTQ plus people, and everyone who's been left out of the conversation for far too long. I'm honored to be the first here in Massachusetts, but I know I won't be the last. I want to speak directly to all the young people in the room today. I know we're in tough times. I know the road ahead looks long and hard, but working together, nothing can stand in our way because love always wins in the end. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for making space to celebrate Harvey, this community, and all of its remarkable achievements. To present the Harvey Milk Legacy Award, please welcome business and community leader, Dee Dee Wilson Barton. to get to present the Legacy Award to a civil rights leader who truly embodies the spirit of Harvey Milk and whose career can only be defined as a legacy. And that leader is Commissioner Nicole Murray Ramirez. Now, Commissioner Ramirez has done a couple of things here and there over the years. Are you ready? Okay. She has been a Latino and an LGBTQ activist for over five decades. Clearly, she started as an infant. Um, she is currently serving as, I just can't do it, 24-point font, I still need the glasses. 
She is currently serving as San Diego City and San Diego County Commissioner. This commission has served and advised eight mayors of San Diego. Commissioner Ramirez has worked with a couple of names you might have heard of. She has worked with Cesar Chavez and Harvey Milk. Um, she has also received the Cesar Chavez Social Justice Award from his widow, Helen Chavez. Nicole, because we're now on a first name basis. Uh, Nicole has served on the national boards, so think about this, the national boards of the National Gay Rights Lobby, the Human Rights Campaign, the National LGBTQ Task Force, State President of Equality California, and is currently the National Chair of the National GLBTQ Civil Rights Network USA. But here's what really matters. Nicole is the reigning queen mother of the oldest LGBTQ organization in North America, the International Imperial Court System. which was founded in 1965, again, when she was an infant, with 70 chapters in the USA, Canada, and Mexico. Celebrated as the founder of the 15-year-old Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast in San Diego, she also co-founded San Diego Pride in 1974, not that anybody in this room enjoys a Pride event. Um, Nicole and the Imperial Courts led the successful national campaigns that resulted in the Harvey Milk U.S. postage stamp and the U.S. N.S. Harvey Milk. I love that. Thank you, Commissioner Nicole. Further recognition includes receiving the keys to the city of Louisville, Kentucky, Salt Lake City, Utah, West Hollywood, California, Portland, Oregon. I don't know how she carries all those keys around, but there you go. Listen, even the late Governor Ann Richards made Nicole an honorary Texan. Everybody wants a little bit. And this is where it gets meaningful and good. Commissioner Ramirez was raised and went to school in our Riverside County. <laughs> Nicole is proud to be gay and Latino. Nicole is a proud drag queen. And Nicole lived for five years in Hollywood in the 1960s as a preoperative transsexual. <laughs> Listen, she's brave, what can I tell you? We are so proud to have Nicole M. Ramirez return to her childhood home of Riverside County and to receive recognition today from the Palm Springs Harvey Milk Breakfast Please join me in recognizing a local hero, a divine and brave servant, Nicole Murray Ramirez, for her lifetime of service to our community. First of all, I would like to acknowledge the land that we stand on of our Native American brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, 
And also, let's acknowledge our servers that did an outstanding job this morning. Thank you so much, gracias. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. But before I get into my remarks, I want to call up uh, a gentleman uh, that our 37th mayor of San Diego, very proud of him, the first openly gay uh, mayor elected in San Diego, uh, Todd Gloria, has asked me to do him a favor. I think you all know that Ron D. Hart first lived in San Diego. And while he was there, he became quite a leader and activist. Uh, Palm Springs gain, our loss. But our mayor wants to make sure that he knows how much we appreciated his leadership. So Ron, come up out here. So on behalf of uh, Mayor Carl Gloria, it's my honor to present you this commendation, making you always an honorary San Diego. <laughs> As many of you know, San Diego is the home of the largest military complex in the Western Hemisphere. Can keep some queens pretty busy. <laughs> but on a serious note, we in San Diego, and I'm sure all of you, appreciate our veterans and active military. So with those veterans that are here with us, this morning our active mil and military. Please stand so we can acknowledge your outstanding service to our great country. Thank you. This morning I want to speak to you as a Latino, as a gay man, and yes, sometimes an aging drag queen who grew up in this wonderful county of Riverside. As someone from the Stonewall generation, as someone who grew up in America in those days when our children could play safely in their front yards, a America that we could keep our front doors unlocked, a America where our churches, temples, synagogues, all houses of worship and schools were safe. But I also grew up when at school, I would not only be called a faggot or a queer, but also a spick, wet bat, greaser. I come from the times of Joe McCarthy of the 1950s and his national anti-homosexual campaigns and witch hunts. I come from the times of the Stonewall riots of the 1960s when LGBTQ people could not even own a bar. Yes, I come from a time that was just a stroke of a pen, the signature of a judge or your parents, homosexual Americans were sent to mental hospitals and many were subjected to electric shock treatment and lobotomies, never to return the same. I come from the times of the 1970s of Anita Bryant and her Save My Children campaign and John Briggs campaign to fire all our LGBT teachers in California. Like many of you, I too come from those early dark years of the 1980s of AIDS when our community could only count on ourselves. And Jerry Farwell and others cursed us as God's plague. So I say to you all that in these last years, a war has been declared on us by the radical extreme right wing of this nation. And I say to you and America, read this old queen silicone boat talks lips. We are never going back into those closets. For the radical right,
far-right extremists do not know our history or our community's resolve. We were here long before Christopher Columbus and other evaders of the sacred land. We were here as two-spirited people that were respected by their native brothers and sisters. We were at Valley Forge with only openly homosexual revolutionary war hero Baron von Stippen and his homosexual lover, whose statue at this day stands across from the White House in Lafayette Park. Do check out that statue. <laughs> we have fought in every American war. And by the way, drag shows have been performed at military bases since the 1800s, especially during World War I and II. And even then, President Roosevelt praised the efforts of these drag shows, which raised millions for the Army Emergency Relief Fund. But it is not only our community under attack and growing hate crimes. And so, our message to America should be, we stand with the Jewish community. We stand with the African community, American community. We stand with a woman's right to control her own body. We stand with immigrants and dreamers. We stand with the Latino community. We stand with the Asian Pacific Islander community. And hear me loud and clear, we stand for gun control. You know, I had the honor of working with Harvey Milk in the 1970s, and I know that if he were alive today, he would tell you that the war that has been declared on our community has also been, been declared on other communities. That a hate crime against anyone and any community is a hate crime against all of us. My message to you is that our LGBTQ community must build stronger bridges and ties to other communities. But we cannot, our community cannot fight this fight alone. We need our allies, friends, families beside us. So, would this morning, our straight friends and families and allies, please, please stand so we can thank you for your support. So, in closing, I say to you, we must all take those who are trying to erase our transgender community very, very seriously. We must stand united and send the message to everyone that when you attack the T and LGBTQ and our youth, you attack all of us. I say to you all, this war against us, we will prevail. This coming 2024 election year is very important. But our enemies do not know that our community is prepared, for we have faced them all our lives. And I say to you, we will win the radical right-wing's war against us because history is on our side. Si se puede, 
Yes, we can. From the bottom of this old queen's heart, we've only just begun to fight. Thank you, and God bless you all. Before Nicole goes off stage, I want to take a moment just to, uh, for a special presentation. Uh, today, the City Council of the City of Palm Springs has declared May 11, 2023, Nicole Murray Ramirez Day in Palm Springs. Please welcome committee member Sam Carr. Well, thank you so much for letting me follow her. That's a challenge. I just saw her walking stick though. It looks like a tire iron, so don't mess with her. Hasn't this been an amazing day? Really is. Um, I'm on the wrong page right away, good. Um, what is so cool about this event is the number of students that are here this morning, right? There are actually more students here today than the number of adults who attended the first two years of the breakfast. We're moving. Today's youth are navigating the intersections of oppression, self-identity, and even poli politics and policies. And by coming together today as a supportive community, we help create spaces in Valley Schools where students feel safe and empowered to navigate the daily challenges of LGBTQ plus youth throughout the Coachella Valley. Community support of the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast has provided more direct funding than any other source to empower Valley Gay Straight Alliances and LGBTQ youth related projects. When you were at school, you may not have had anything like a Gay Straight Alliance, but today, the GSA clubs are thriving in the Valley, and youth are benefiting from a variety of programs supported by the funds that you raise and we raise together here today at the Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast. This year, again, I have the good fortune to make a video with the students at the Rainbow Youth Summit. And you'll see some of the, it's amazing how many of those students are here today. And you'll see students that are currently in junior high school and high school and college. And at the end of the video, I managed to ca catch up with students who were in GSA and here at this breakfast four years ago and six years ago and ten years ago. So you'll see them young and old at the end of the video. And honestly, I could talk about it forever. Uh, but I think the best way for you to hear what they have to say is hear what you have to say. So roll the video, please you rocking this world in your gender non-conforming beautifulness it's what matters and it's what's going to change this world come on you gotta know what you're doing it's like you're going to be an activist students today are more engaged in activism than ever before because the fight is clearly not over which makes their gsa connections priceless Surprisingly emotional for me, getting the chance to see those kids as they grow up, so I feel very lucky. Um, you should be proud of what we've done here over the past years, supporting all the things they do, like the Pride Prom and the Rainbow Youth Summit and, and so many things. So now it's time to make sure we continue that support for the next generations. I'd like to call up my friends, Bella DeBall and Ethelina Can, and together we want to ask you for your money. Oh, it should say financial support. Right, I'm being professional. Hey, girl. Hey. By lifting up every single student here this morning, we are giving them hope. Just like Harvey said, we are changing lives, saving lives, and we are giving them a chance to be and live in their most authentic space. 
On your table, uh, 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 here we are. you are going to find a small white envelope. Uh, we are here to talk about that envelope and the QR code on the screen and in your program. So in case you didn't get the hint, we're hoping you can pull out your stuff and uh, make a donation right now. Every single one of us in this room can make a difference. We can show you that we've got their back. Let's close our event this morning. We have a real treat for you. Here to honor Harvey's legacy while we continue to take your donations <laughs> yes. is the Desert Theatrical Choir with Jordan Hughes from Rancho Mirage High School and featuring Vonetta Mixon with an amazing rendition of one of the show-stopping numbers from the Broadway musical Hairspray. Here is I Know Where I've Been. Get ready for this, it's beautiful. Yes. TV coverage of the 
Coachella Valley Harvey Milk. I'm Nicholas Snow. Was that not a transformational, inspirational program? I, as I said at the top of the show, this is one of my favorite events that I attend every year. I'm honored to have captured footage of many of them. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, there are aspects of what happened here today that were not part of the program to protect uh, people's intellectual property and also their identities. But I brought you most of it, and I appreciate you for watching. Until next time, I'm Nicholas Snow. Get the rush